Shalom, Shalom. Give all praise to Yahweh, Basham Yosha, Basham Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles for their edification and knowledge. With the Wadiya Basham Yosha for putting the spirit of the elders and apostles so we be edified regarding this truth and knowledge. Learn this truth and knowledge, knowing this truth and knowledge. Call holy Yahweh, Yahweh, Basham Yosha, Basham Rakakadash. Give all praise to Yahweh, Basham Yosha, Basham Rakakadash. Proverbs 3 13 through 15. Proverbs 3.13, happy, happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that, that getteth understanding. For the, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. So, happy who's get the wisdom, man, because the wisdom is finer than gold, it's finer than rubies, it's finer than money, man. So with wisdom, man, that's a tr that's a that's a high commodity, a treasure, man, to get. Fifteen, she is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not compared into her. So this wisdom and this wisdom and um, knowledge and understanding is priceless. It has no price on it. It's, the value is very is the value is very very high. So nothing can compare to it, man. And that's a privilege and a blessing and a gift, man, to have that wisdom. The privilege is, um, is only bestowed on a certain few, not all, man. So getting that wisdom would be um, a privilege, man, and a gift. I want to go to... Um, continue on. I want to go to uh, Proverbs 16 and 16. This is Proverbs 16 and 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than... Read it again. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? So this wisdom and understanding is much better than um, the, sil the silver and gold and rubies and treasures, man. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But the excellency of, of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. And ultimately it's going to give life, man. Everlasting life to have it, man. Because the other things are good, but wisdom is better, man. Go to um, James one and twenty one. Let's go to James one and twenty one. James one and twenty one. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness and grafted. And receive, or we read again, wherefore, lay apart, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, truth and knowledge, this truth and knowledge, which is able to save your soul, this truth and knowledge. And superfluity is what? It's excess. A pethra, deluge. A flood of, um, in this case, um, excess of too much things, man. So denounce of those things, decrease of those things, man. You know what I mean? And seek things that are uh, related to the wisdom and understanding, man. Because that's what, uh, 
was um, was needed. Wherefore, lay apart all the filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness relating to the sins, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which leads to the truth and knowledge, which is able to save your soul. And ultimately, this truth and knowledge is able to save your soul, man. With the wisdom of it, man, knowing of it, you begin to change what you can change. Go to, um, Go to Proverbs, Proverbs 1. Let's go to Proverbs 1, 2, and 7. Proverbs 1, 2, and 7. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the, the instructions of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase the learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Man, it's truth and knowledge. 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They despise the wisdom and instruction, so the wicked despise this wisdom and instruction, man, which ultimately can lead them to their damnation, man. But to know, under, but to know wisdom and instruction in the words of understanding relating to this truth and knowledge, man. I'm going to read down to 20... Uh, I'll start at 20 and I'm going to read all the way down. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. Relates to the truth and knowledge by the prophets. The spirit of Yahweh Shem Yashan and the prophets prophesizing. So the wisdom is being crying out. It's crying out. She crieth in the chief places of concourse, in the opening of the gates in the cities. She uttered her words, saying, That's the men prophesizing. How long ye simple ones will love simplicity and scorners delight? And they're scorning fools hate knowledge. That's the two thirds. Turn you at my who behold, I will pour out my spirit into you, and I will make known my words into you. It's truth and knowledge. Because I have called and ye refuse ye refuse, and I will stretch out my hand and no man regardeth. That relates to this this word being pushed out, man, but many are, are gonna reject it, man. But ye have sought at naught at my counsel. And, and would and would none of my reproof. The council is what? The prophets, man. So pretty much they um they haven't taken heed or consider or being um persuaded or convinced in their mind to um to take heed of what's being spoken, man. Twenty six. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear cometh. So since they rejected it, so the Lord's gonna reject them and pretty much mock them when when the stuff hits the fan man when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind so it's going to come quick it's going to come unexpected it's going to come like that thief in the night the scriptures say when they say peace and safety then what sudden destruction come first of um, Thessalonians 5 and 3 Read it again, 27. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. So all these things are going to come upon the ones who pretty much didn't take heed or, or didn't consider the possibility or most of all wasn't convinced otherwise. Um, 28. They shall, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So when the stuff hits the fan, that's when they're going to call on the Lord. For they that hate knowledge 
and did not choose to fear the Lord. That's the two thirds majority of people. They, they would none of my counsel. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. They despise the counsel of the prophets prophesizing, and pretty much giving them the warning. 31. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. So the Lord is going to give them up to their own vile affections, their own devices, their own lust and desires, man. Um, 32. For turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them, man. But whosoever hearken unto me shall dwell safety and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. So pretty much is telling you to take heed, man, while you can, man. While the evil is still at somewhat at a distance relating to um, um, 12 and 1 of Ecclesiastes, man. Get this understanding in thy youth while the evil and uh, while the evil still at bay, you know. But it's coming closer, man, because that doors are um, beginning to get shut, man. They begin to get shut. Um, I'll get um first second I guess second Ezra fifteen and forty nine. Then I'm gonna get uh, Ecclesiasticus five and seven. Second Ezra is. Um, Second Ezra is 15 and 49. I will send the plagues upon thee. So the Lord is going to send the plagues upon thee. So the Lord is beginning to visit the earth which he has made. He's going to send plagues, different types of um, calamities. I will send the plagues upon thee, the widowhood, which means people are going to be without spouse, both man and woman. Poverty, famine, the sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. So, that's the things that the Lord is going to be sending, man. Um, Ecclesiasticus 5 and 7. Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 5 and 7. Ecclesiastes 5 and 7. Ecclesiastes 5 and 7. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord, so don't wait. Tarry means don't wait. And put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. Because remember, it's going to come like that thief in the knife. It's going to cut, it's going to creep unawares, man. I'm going to read it fully. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Because you don't know what's going to happen to you from day to day. Certain things can happen. You might not have the... You had the opportunity to do certain things, but for example, you put it off, man. And you think you all, and most of the people think they have all the time in the world, man. They have that second uh, Peter's three, three and four, specifically number fourth verse. The promise of his coming, I guess the fathers fell asleep and things continue as normal, man. For example, paraphrasing. So they had that kind of spirit, man. They think they can always repent and, you know, they got all the time in the world, but. That's that false sense of security, man. And because of that false sense of security, things can come unawares upon them, you know, and take them before they get the chance, man. So that's why it make you no know, Terry to um, to repent individually and collectively. Because in a matter of speaking, <laughs> um, no, each, um, each day is not promised to you, man. So you never know, man. The point is, Terry, not, don't wait on doing it, man. That's the point. That's the equally SC5 and 7, man. 
We'll make it again. I'm going to read it again. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, so don't wait around, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So it's going to come like a thief at night, come unexpectedly. So do it while the grace period of liberty is still open. All right, let's go to, um, <clears throat> it's only for your interest, man. John 8.32, John 8.32, John 8.32, ye shall know, let me see, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, so the truth is going to make you free, man, because lies, lie, we've been, we've been covered, in, and under the veil of lies, man, so we've been living on the false sense of comfort and security with lies, man. So the truth has set you free, man. Knowing the truth sets you free. Sometimes it's, you know, it feels good to know, and sometimes it don't. But point is, the truth has um, set you free, man. And that's the, that's the balance of the truth. Sometimes the truth feels good, sometimes it don't. But, it sets, but knowing it sets you free. Let's continue on. Isaiah 33 and 6. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. Stability goes to pretty much sound, rooted, sound, rooted, stable, man. Sound mind. Because it's going to come a time where the wisdom is going to be what's going to keep you stable in those times, man. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure, man. So that wisdom and knowledge is going to be, it's going to be um, the stability, especially in the times that's currently now building up and definitely for the times to come, man. So that's a spiritual, it's a spiritual, um, it's a spiritual um, stability, man. Because a lot of things is going to be manifested, man, that is going to put a lot of confusion, terror, and different types of emotions upon the people, man. And they, they're not going to be able to re react. They, they're going to react in a certain manner, man. They ain't going to, you know, they're going to be, um, they're going to be pretty much bonkers, man. So, so they're going to, um, majority, uh, only a few will have that stability in those times, man, because they'll understand what's really going on. But the majority of the people will be, um, Pretty much, in a matter of speaking, clueless, man. Joel 2 and 1. Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm. In my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. So that's a warning for for the inhabitants. That trumpet, that's that warning being blown. The inhabitants of the people in the land. For the day of the Lord coming for at, for, let me read it again. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm. In my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. So, the day of the Lord is, is nigh at hand. So, that trumpet is being blown to warn that the, the day of the Lord is coming, is, is getting closer, is getting near. That's what that nigh is, getting near. And Amos 5 and uh, 18 talk about the day of the Lord is not going to be... A day of light is going to be dark, very dark. So it's not going to be a good day, man. That's just an example. Let's go to, um, this was one. Let's go to Amos 8 and 11. Because this truth of knowledge is not always going to be out here. 
the prophets are not always going to be out here speaking certain things to warn the people, man. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. There will be a famine, a famine of food, which is the bread. But also, let me read it again. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Lord God, Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst and water, but a hearing the words of the Lord. So the Lord's going to send a, fam a famine relating to um, closing the word, where the communications of the word that's being set out right now is going to be um, it's going to be shut. That door is going to be shut, man. So um, get get it um, get the knowledge and receive it while you can. You know, consider the possibility. Be convinced in your mind. The scripture talks about be be totally convinced in your mind regarding um, certain matters, man. Because the word is not always going to be out here. It's closing slow, slowly and surely. Little by little. Um, Nahum 3 and 1. Nahum 3 and 1. Woe to the bloody city. That's a warning for destruction. It is full of lies, robbery. The prey departed not, man. Let's talk about that spe specific city relating to Babylon. That's that bloody city, man. Babylon. It's full of lies, robbery, and the prey. The ones who's been it been preying upon is still in the land. You know what I mean? They're still there. So that's a warning upon it relating to that city, man. That most powerful city. You know what it is. <laughs> Go to um, Isaiah four, one and four. Isaiah one and four. Ah, a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptible. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel into anger. They are going away backwards. And ultimately, that's the uh, nation of Israel, man. The two-thirds, man. That's going to be cut off and die. According to uh, Zechariah 13 and 8, man. Go to um, Amos nine and ten. Amos nine and ten. Amos 9 and 10. This is Amos 9 and 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. The sword is ultimately um, the Lord's judgment, man.
which say, which say, evil shall not overtake us nor prevent us. So are they going to die by the sword? And that's going to be in different diverse forms of judgment related to the chariots and ultimately those arrows, which are the missiles, man. And this was something short. Um, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yoshah, Bashim, Merkakadash. This is Brother Zayab. I hope it helps whoever listens in some way. Shalom, thanks.